Welcome to the 3D physics tutorial in GDEVO where we will be of course learning how to do 3D physics. Now this actually, this tutorial in itself will actually be quite short because it's a simple technique that is going to allow many people to make 3D physics in their GDEVO games much easier without having to fake everything. So here is how it works. So let's start off first of all by creating a camera object and creating a player object of course the camera object so we can externally look at the player because G develops default camera system is very bad in terms of 3d trying to make actual uh, actual game with it it does not really fulfill our needs so we're going to go into create a new object and we're going to create a 3d box we're going to name this 3d box player and if for the sprites, we're going to have it as, I'm going to choose a file. Normally what you should do if you want to copy exactly like me, go to create with Piscal and color a 32 by 32 cube. Just fill the whole thing in. The reason why I'm not gonna show it here because like, like I said at the moment, my Piscal does not work in terms of GDevelop. But I already have some files, so I'm going to go into my um, pictures, I'm going to go into my game sprites, I'm going to go into my test sprites for tutorials, and go into my red cube. And now that I go into my right cube, um, it shows that at the front face. Now, since we're making a cube, we want to show all the faces, of course. So we're going to show bottom face. We're going to show all the faces. And if you're not familiar with this, I have a three many 3D guys on my channel, so you can go check them out whenever you feel like you need to. But go to all these faces and then put red cube for all the faces. This is just pretty simple. We're just getting the player set up. And let's hit apply. And now let's add another object. And we're going to call this sprite, well not, I meant they can put a, um, a regular sprite. We want to make sure we make this a 3D object because we're moving in a 3D space. And things work a little bit differently with 3D objects. So we're going to scroll down and create another 3D box. And we're going to name this one camera. Keep the width and everything the same. And of course we want to show all the faces. Make sure these are clicked on. And actually it really doesn't matter for the camera in this case because um, it will not be seen in um, the game but we're still going to fill up all the faces in this case I'm going to use a blue cube of course you can go to Pisco and color it blue and just make it for all the faces just so we can always see it in the editor because that still is important so we can see it in the editor but we won't be able to see it in the game so we're going to fill all of this in blue cube blue cube and apply now another thing we want to do we're going to have to use this later like so if you've seen my other tutorials you already know I'm about to create a simple three third person camera and I'm going to create slash search for a new extension and in this case I'm going to put first person 3d camera and the reason why I'm getting this is we're looking through an object's eyes in this case we're going to be looking through the camera's eyes so really this is still using a first person camera but we're just always looking at the player giving it um, the effect of a third person camera now let's go into our events now we haven't gotten to the part of actually programming 3d figs but we're going to get to that in a second now let's add a new event and we want to make sure that the camera looks through the camera's eyes, not the player's eyes. So we want this condition to always be in effect. So we want to put no condition here that signifies that will always be happening. And let's add an action and click into camera. And then, well not camera, click into other actions. Then go into first person 3D camera, look through object eyes. Choose the object that you want the eyes to look through. In this case we want camera we're on the base layer so we're going to use base layer and click OK now of course we haven't dragged any of these on scene yet let's drag them in here now and as you see you can tell it's a 3D object if I move it around the scene you can already tell that it has actual sides um, so I'm going to just drop it about right here and I'm going to drop the player right here so it has something to look at and when I preview we should be looking at a red cube yeah right here and I'm going to make sure we go back a little bit and just so it can get a better view but it really doesn't matter here um, we're just getting a decent view of the camera all right so I'll just keep it at I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to this so let me just hurry up and make make it so it's the same I'm gonna set the y-axis positions as the same and let's see how this looks like I said it doesn't have to be like this as long as you can see the player in this case is fine so we're gonna keep it like this to start out now, I didn't tell it scene events, we're in the events. Now I'm going to show you that when it comes to regular 3D, when we're dealing with a regular third person camera or a regular camera in general, when we're dealing with axes, 
it's hard to make many complicated games because the Y axis it's hard to make jumping features because normally when we're trying to make those features we're using the Z axis we're using the Z position to change the height of the player and in this case GDevelop does not have full support for the Z um, for the Z positions yet so it makes it very hard to program true physics for 3d now how are we going to do this now first I want to show you how it works first of all so I'm going to add a new event and normally if I want to go up in the game you know I'll want to change the y-axis but let's see what happens so I'm going to add a condition and go to other conditions go into keyboard and we're going to put if key pressed in this case we're going to check if up key is pressed that means the up arrow key it should be on the right side of the keyboard and click OK and then we're also going to click into what we want to do is we're going to go into player and we're going to go into Y position and in terms of GDevelop when come if we want to go up in GDevelop we don't add Y position like we think we usually would when we want to go up in GDevelop we subtract from the Y position and a good value I think 3.5 not too fast not too slow and let's see what happens now when I press up you're gonna notice something interesting the thing is I'm moving to the left I'm not moving up I'm moving to the left and that's the major problem that we've been having in GDevelop in terms of making complicated projects this thing when we change the Y position which is what we normally use for physics in terms of going up and down it's not changing up and down it's only changing um, the, the X position in this case and like so I'm going to copy and paste this code copy and paste it and then I'm going to put if down key is pressed and instead of putting instead of putting um, y position subtracted I'm going to put y sub um, position added and as you can see like I said we'll go to the right now if I put down and we'll go to the left if I put up now this is where the root of all of our problems well not all of them but most of our problems lie in terms of 3d and GDevelop how do we change this so when we actually change the y axis it goes up instead of going to the side because that's a major part because let's say I want to program some jumping or a physical object if it starts falling it's going to start falling to the left and that makes no sense in terms of a game we don't want that now this change like I said, this video is not gonna be that long because the change is very very simple the change all lies in the rotation of the camera and it's so obvious that it seems like no one knows it or anyone that I know has noticed it I think this might be a new discovery but um, I'm going to put negative 90 here on the X rotation of the camera and you can't really tell what happened here because like I said it's just an evenly shaped cube so you can't really tell the difference of what just happened but I just rotated it onto negative 90 now you'll see if I press up now it actually goes up so this one change this one change right here changes everything we know about it now there is a drawback to it the drawback is now when it comes to going left and right we have to use the x-axis but the reason why this is better because you may think okay what's the point you just you just made it harder to deal with another axis and I did make it harder to deal with the x-axis now but the thing the advantage is normally when you're playing games like X the x-axis is not as complicated you're just moving to the side not to say it never can be complicated I'm just saying most of the time you're just doing basic movements like if you're making a basic platform or something you're just making basic movements to the side the most complicated movements most of the time come from that Y position because of gravity this is why this is better than the normal setup so now we need to do something else if I go into scene events you might be wondering okay how do we go left or right now in order for it to go left and right we have to actually change the Z position we have to change the Z position so I'm going to add a new event and add a condition and go into other conditions go into keyboard if this key is pressed I'm going to put if left key is pressed remember when I say left is on the keyboard we're going to change the Z position of player we're going to go scroll down put Z like that normally it says elevation because this is what they expect you to use even GDevote wasn't ready for this like this is this crazy and I'm going to go into subtract well not subtract, I'm going to go into add and I'm going to add 3.5 on Z and let's see what happens when I press when I press left 
Okay, it goes to the right, so that means we want to put, instead of add, we want to put subtract, and then it'll go to the left. And I'm going to put copy and paste this, and instead of putting left key, let's put right key, and then let's finally put add. And this will allow us to move um, left and right now. And another thing you can do here, um, if you want to move forward, which is kind of our Z position. If you want to move forward, you would change the um, X position. So I'm going to show you this real fast as well. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to just copy and paste this like two times and then just make some slight tweaks to the code. So I'm going to put, instead of right key is pressed, I'm going to use W. Instead of um, right key for here, I'm going to put S. And instead of changing the Z position, I'm going to go into the X position. And let's keep this at add. And let's see what happens. When I press W, I'm moving forward. As you can see, I'm clearly moving forward farther away from the camera. And then, like I said, we can just put, instead of changing X here, well, we we'll put changing X instead of putting add, we put subtract. And now we should have, we should have it right. I can move forward, I can move backwards, I can move up, I can move down. Now, I know what you're talking, what you mean, like what you're probably saying right now is, where are the physics? Let me show you this. Now, this is a great application to show because I'm going in the future tutorial, the reason why I want to show this video, because I want to see what you all come up with. I want to help you all out with this because this is very important. But I'm going to be making tutorials in the future on how this can practically be used to make games that normally we thought couldn't have even been made in GDevelop. Now, I'm going to click into a player and I'm going to go into behaviors and let's add a platform behavior because normally we wouldn't be able to do this. So I'm going to put platform character and I'm going to put ignore the default controls. We don't want to be able to move from the default controls. I'm going to hit apply. Now if I preview right now, you're going to notice one thing. The first thing you're going to notice is we're actually falling. That's much different because if I change the rotation to zero here, let's say I change the rotation to zero on the camera it's as you can see it falls to the right and that makes no sense in our case that's not useful in our case so we're going to put it back at negative 90 and like i said you'll see us i just want to show you again it's just so beautiful it falls to it falls downwards like it's supposed to be it's actually simulating gravity now i'm going to show you we need to create some ground now because here thing, I'm going to show you a challenge that, that we have to deal with as well because of, it does have drawbacks because at the end of the day, GDevelop is a 2D engine. So there are drawbacks to every method. But let's add a new object and I'm going to make this a 3D box as well. And it really doesn't matter if 3D or 2D because you'll see why in a moment. I'm going to call this ground. And in your case, you can go to Pisco create a 32 by 32 X black cube. In this case, let's show all the faces and um, I'm going to go into my tutorial sprites and put the black cube. Like I said, you can just create a 32 by 32 black cube. Let's fill it in for all the faces and see what happens. Well, we know what's gonna happen. It's gonna make an object. So we have a black cube filled in here. Let's hit apply and drag it onto the scene. Now, here how it goes. I'm gonna drag this, I'm gonna drag this out and I'm gonna actually make the depth now, yeah, I'm going to make the depth very wide, very wide. And you can kind of see it like 3D and GFOP is extremely cool. Like it's just so cool to be looking at this. But um, let's go preview this and see how it looks. Now, as you can see, I just fell through the ground. I forgot to add the platform behavior to it. So let's go into the behaviors for ground, add a behavior and add the platform behavior. And let's hit apply. Let's preview it now and see what happens. Now you can see I'm actually standing on ground now standing on ground and of course I don't have the 100% right angle yet um, in terms of my gameplay I don't have a good angle that I have set up right now but um, just know that it is moving totally fine on this axis on left and right now something you're going to notice is that and let me move this this object to the right here and give it a very thick depth so it just kind of stretches across the entire place so this would be pretty good and I'm going to change the jump height here so we can see the jump more in action 
And now I'm going to put, go into edit be, um, behaviors in this, and I'm going to set the jump speed. This controls like the strength of the jump. Let's set this to 900 just so we can see more of the jump. And instead of putting it going up, instead of putting um, when up is pressed, subtract the Y position, we want to simulate the jump key press. So I'm going to delete this, add an action, go into player, and we're going to put simulate. We're going to put where is it? I'm trying to find it. Simulate the jump key press. Well, in this case, uh, case yeah, we put simulate jump key press. And let's see how this looks. We should see a jump. Now, as you can see, it's closer to the camera. I'm going to move forward a little bit so we can see better. But I'm going to hit jump. It jumps up. And this is no longer fake physics. I can see one of the problems that I've been having in GDevelop and many others have been having is we haven't been able to create a realistic jump. But this and this using this method, we can easily create a realistic jump because we're actually using physics. Now, of course, the camera is not following the player. I didn't program to follow it, but I have that done in another tutorial. You can check it out. Should be in a card. If not, if I forgot to somehow put it, it's on my channel for a third person camera. Now, let's talk about the drawbacks. What are the drawbacks of this? Because what challenges are we going to have to face when we're using this version of 3D and GDevelop? Now. The challenge that we have to face here is the X axis being the one that is now being simulated. Now what do I mean by this? Let's I'm going to make this platform very skinny. I'm going to make it skinny so we can see like if us fall off of it. Um this should be good. I'm going to make it skinny. Okay. You can't really see it right now. Let me make it a little bit match like the Z axis a little bit more. Yeah, same Z. Now, let's preview this and see how it looks. Now, as you can see, I'm standing on it. When I move forward, everything is fine. When I'm moving forward, you can't you can't really see the whole ground. But here's the thing. When I move to the left, to the right, as you can see, I'm floating. If I move forward, I will not be floating. I'll actually fall off. So basically, the challenge here is now we have to simulate when the player is off a platform and let's say i'm going to show you how we can deal with this how we can actually make some games using some example projects but this is the new challenge that we have to face here's an idea i haven't tested this exactly yet but here's an idea for all of you programmers out there try to set it so if the z order if our z well not our z if our x position is not within a certain range of an object we ignore the collision because the, th the game still thinks is in collision with the ground so it doesn't fall so basically what I'm saying is we have to set up some type of condition that deactivates the collision depending on our X position if that makes sense but we're going to cover this challenge by making many more games in the future I want to show you this video because to me is groundbreaking is a groundbreaking development 4G develop no pun intended in terms of the 3D we can now make actual jumping and if you actually have a wide ground, this gravity thing isn't even a problem. If you're just sitting on a flat ground and you want to make a 3D game like that, this is not even a problem in the least. But now, everything on the X has to be simulated, which is much easier than simulating things on the Y axis. But that's it. That is how you make 3D physics in GDevelop. If you like this video, you like this content, please comment down below. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any of my new videos. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers before the end of the year, so that would be great if you would just hit that subscribe button before you forget about it, if you enjoy these type of videos. Also, make sure to comment down below what tutorials you want to see next. With this new advancement and this new development, many more things can be done in GDevelop than we thought we used to be able to do in GDevelop. So you can comment down many more ideas that are actually more feasible in GDevelop now because of this development. Of course, feel free to comment down other tutorial ideas whenever you feel like it as well. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. See ya.